Hey everybody, welcome back to Inside the Force. Dave Cottingham here with Hannah Burr. How are you, Hannah? I am well, and how are you? Good. Good. So, not too much going on in Star Wars this week. No. Did get a new episode of The Bad Batch. Yes. Which we'll talk about, which means it's only two episodes left. So it's coming down to the wire, but we'll talk about that and get into some news. And I got finally got an updated list that I've been I've, I've neglected the last couple of weeks. I think of you know all the upcoming comics that are hitting up the month of April, the rest of April and May. A lot of good stuff and a lot of good. Con- There's some actually some comic news that we'll talk about too, but. First and foremost, as always, thanks to our patrons. Appreciate your support, especially uh, my three master patrons that are a huge supporter of ours. And again, always thankful for them. Keeps this thing going. And just, you know, love that we get to do this for you all. I put up a reaction video yesterday, Hannah, uh, for episode 13. Again, not, you know, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot there. It's not, a, not too crazy of an episode, but, uh, did get some comments from the guys on that. So we'll, we'll go over that as well. But, uh, first up, there is some comic news that I want to talk about because, we don't actually talk about that a lot because, you know, th- there is some series out there that are pretty ongoing. The Star Wars series, which is running between, taking place between Empire and Jedi, is in the 40s as well as Darth Vader. But those are actually, it looks like those are actually coming to an end now because they are getting closer. It's getting closer to Return of the Jedi now. So it mm. looks like, looks like episode fit or episode uh, issue 50s of those runs we'll kind of close this thing out very similar to what they did with the between a new hope and an empire. So after that's done, I mean, what's crazy is that you have their entire story now between those three movies. So what you're saying is there's time for us to catch up. Oh yeah. There's time for us to catch up. Sure. (laughs) In fact, I thought about that. I think I'm going to start, really diving into those issues and over the weekends. Um, I feel like I'm a little, I'm I'm getting a little ahead on work right now. (laughs) So I have some time, but, uh, yeah, Vader and star Wars will be kind of hitting a road to the uh, road to return of the Jedi this summer. So that's going to kind of push it towards the end and, and get it very similar to what they did. Like I said, to butt up against empire, which is pretty neat. So, um, again, I just think that's really neat. Like if you really wanted to just sit there and follow the entire story of Luke, Leia, Han, and then Vader from a new hope to return of the Jedi, you have every story you of do. like what, what they did, which is pretty crazy. So I'm cu- I'm wondering if they will, if they're going to do this, like they're going to go back to episode one and then start doing a story between one and two, you think? Oh, absolutely. Uh, unless they have some animated show in the works or some live action show in the works, that wouldn't surprise me at all. That's true. That's true. Another uh, series, which is pretty interesting that they're going to launch this summer, is, which is getting a lot of attention um, with like you, one of your favorite books, Rise of the Red Blade. Mm-hmm. Star Wars Inquisitors is coming. Yes. So this is uh, set, I believe it's uh, got to be set right after episode three, but it says weapons of the Empire, weapons of the Emperor set out into the galaxy to track down and kill any Jedi who survived Jedi Order 66. The ruthless Inquisitors are among the most skilled and deadly threats to those who serve the light of sight of the four. Buried in the annuals of Jedi lore, is the story of Tensu Run, the Jedi who faced the Inquisitors and Darth Vader. What became of him and why did the Empire so greatly fear his existence? So that is coming out 
Um, Wait, is that who I think it is? Tensu Run? Yeah, is that who I think it is? I don't know if I know that name. I think I do. No, I don't know that name. Never mind. I don't know that name. Okay. I feel better. I thought I, I thought I recognized their name from... Rise of the Blade? That and also a Darth Vader comic. Oh, gotcha. So I, I thought it was the same Jedi, but it's not. So never mind. So you've got another... So that's coming out. You've got another series coming out. Uh, they did the black, white, and red series with Darth Vader. They're doing that now coming up with Darth Maul. So Darth Ooh. Maul, black, red, and white is coming. Or black, white, and red is coming out this summer as well. And then you've got some High Republic um, uh, issues. And then you've got the adaptation of Ahsoka coming to comic form as well. Just like they've done with Obi-Wan and the Mandalorian. I don't think they've done Andor yet. Interesting. But, but they have adapted those to comics. Okay. And apparently there is going to be a Acolyte one shot coming out as well. I, I don't have any information on I don't see any information on that, but apparently there is a one shot Acolyte issue. Okay. It's going to be coming out. So, yeah. Usually that's something they put out right before the show, you know, so the series starts. Right. So I would anticipate that maybe coming out sometime in obviously the mid to late May. But yeah, that looks like that's going to be out there too. So yeah, interesting uh, comics. You know, of course, um, as far as the publishing goes, you know, the Vader comic and the Star Wars comics out there. And then you have, you have the short run Mace Windu series that's out there right now. Django, a Django Fett series just started, but the, I believe both of those are limited releases. They're not really ongoing. So we'll see where, I guess, you know, there, there probably will be some news here soon beyond once the Star Wars series and the Vader series ends, where is that's going to pick up from there? Um, it could be that they continue just right after Return of the Jedi. Maybe. Start doing start doing some comics about Luke and Leia and all that, you know, although we kind of know, we kind of have the year after in book form with aftermath. So I think it would have to be after the battle of jet battle, battle of Jetta, maybe. Well, you also have the princess and the scoundrel. So it does kind of have to be after oh, Jetta, yeah. unless you want to tr solely focus on Luke and what Luke was going through. Yes. I'm all for that. So there you go. Some some good publishing stuff coming out there. And then the only other thing I saw in the news that was really interesting was uh, Daisy Ridley is doing some rounds right now. I, get, I think she's got a movie coming out. Mm. And she talked about a script read that's going to be happening for this new Jedi Order movie. Of course, that's not technically the name of it, but it's what everybody's calling it. And, you know, that that... That, that's really all she said. And I think that just tells me more so than any other movie news we've ever gotten, you know, recently is that that movie, it seems like it's actually going to happen. Uh, the thing is though, out of those three, if I were a betting woman and I'm not, that's the movie I would say would definitely happen. Mm -hmm. Is it the movie that I necessarily want? Not really. Now, why do you say that? Why do you think that's definitely going to happen? Because it's, it's a character that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. strong female lead, a better strong female lead than others we've had in Star Wars, and it's set in a comfortable time. Well, in a time we haven't explored. Haven't explored, but it's also one we're familiar with versus like the dawn of the Jedi. That is brand spanking new. Yeah, yeah, true. True. Yeah, I think I think uh I think they really wanting to yeah, push this movie of course and, and continue the ray popularity and mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems right, but 
definitely, you know, with all these movies that have been mentioned, like James Mangold's Dawn of the Jedi, and, you know, I'm pretty sure Filoni's movie's going to happen still. But, you know, Patty Jenkins apparently is back, you know, trying to make Rogue Squadron. So we'll see if that gets anywhere. But, but this, uh, this, this Jedi Order one definitely is, looks like it's going to start shooting here soon. And then I believe this is a December 2025 release date. So that's not that far away. It's a, yeah, it's just a little less than two years. So they better, yeah, they better start shooting this, <laughs> this summer. And see, that's the thing too, is I wonder if they've gotten a little wiser about not putting as much money in these movies. Hmm. You know what I mean? Um, like this story, I feel like could be a lot more isolated, you know, and not as fast. Mm-hmm as a Star Wars movie that we're, you know, movies that we're used to. Right. I don't know. Could be wrong. But I have a feeling because of the recent changes that Disney has made with cutting, you know, they're, they're, they're cutting series off Disney Plus and they're really paying attention, at least what Iger's saying, more to quality, not quantity. You know, meaning that they're trying to obviously make their dollars go further. And what do you, how do you do that? You don't spend as much money on a movie and you try to make more money off of it. Right. So anyway, and, and the fact that the, the star Wars movies haven't been out in a long time, you've got to come out the gate and set a pretty decent precedent. That's true. To make some money. You know what I mean? Even though they've made billions off the thing movies, but you know, one no solo doesn't do too good, so they gotta like pull the plug on everything. Anyway, okay. Uh, let's see. You know the novels, like I said, or the comics, like I said. Uh, big news there. The ones that are coming out here on yourselves next week. You've got uh, Jango Fett number two. That Darth Maul, black, white, and red. I mentioned number one is next week. Uh, May 8th, you've got Dece uh, Darth Vader 26, as well as High Republic number 7, May Sweeney number 4 on May 15th, and then Star Wars 46 on May 22nd. And then novels, um, you know, this past week, not this last Tuesday, you've got The Living Force that came out, the brand new novel. And then June 11th, Temptation of the Fourth, June tw or September 24th, Tears of the Nameless, those are both High Republic books. The Glass Abyss, which is the Mace Windu novel, actually got delayed and pushed back to October 15th huh. now instead of August. So that is, uh, that, is, that is a little bit further down this year. So those are the novels so far coming out this year. Okay, uh, let's get into the Bad Batch a little bit here. So episode 13 entitled into the breach so i've already watched this thing a couple times and did my like i said did my reaction video on patreon your reaction hannah to this episode so uh first bit i think it's still very tense you know that they're going to get to omega but their whole plan with uh rampart and the fact that he's like, I'm sorry, this is a commander's uniform. I was a vice admiral. <laughs> it's like, okay, dude, you were demoted. Just shut up and put it on. And just like how elaborate their plan was is great. You also, so that's them going into the breach. You have Omega going into the breach out thinking everyone. And part of me wonders if Emery purposely left her tools out for Omega to take. You know, part of me wonders if she did that intentionally. Interesting. Or mm. she just chooses to be ignorant of the fact that Omega can take things to her advantage. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, then it's, you know, it's her figuring out how they're going to escape. And she finds a plan and she's absolutely brilliant. 
And then you have, um, <laughs> you have, uh, so, so throughout the entire episode, I was like, okay, what's going on? Okay. 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 And then literally the last five seconds, my reaction was, yeah. If I did a reaction video, Dave, when I saw it today, I w- that literally would have been my video for 15 seconds was just, <laughs> what? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> they, they did what? And that's truly going into the breach. I mean, it's absolutely insane, but it shows how far they're willing to go. I thought when they sent tech to go on the ship to uh, lower the sensors so that they can... Uh, get the codes, I could have sworn that Tech was going to die. Mm. Like that was going to be his death moment is that he was going to die getting them the coordinates for when where Tantus was. You mean you mean Echo? Echo, not Tech, sorry, yeah, Echo. Echo. My bad, yes. Echo. They're both technologically savvy. Echo. Yes, yes. But Echo, yeah. I, I thought that was going to be when Echo was going to die. I, I wonder if we're going to get that rogue fighter back and if it's going to be tech. Uh, yeah, sorry, I misspoke. I meant Echo. Yeah, no, um, that's fine. Yeah, what were your thoughts? Yeah, I think, you know, this was kind of expected for one, just because you knew after obviously at the end of the last episode, they had rampart that the next step was figuring out the the coordinates. And I I do finally love the explanation because I think the, there was the sense of this. I don't know. I had the sense that, well, how hard can it be? Because, Somehow, somehow they got to know the coordinates. I mean, they people fly mm. there all the time. You know, somehow they got. To, I love the explanation of how the coordinates aren't pushed in until you're about, literally about to jump. That's crazy. It's crazy, right? And so that does keep it secret. Very difficult to acquire. So I love that aspect of it, and I love how they figured it out. And you know, to be able to go to the space station above Coruscant in the middle of the empire. I I did, I did wonder like, how, wait a minute, how can they walk around there? No, not anybody know that who they are, you know, like I thought that too. And haven't they like, been like wanted? <laughs> and wouldn't people be like, wait a minute, Rampart, what are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be in a camp? Well, the, the Rampart part, I can maybe understand because there's so many officers. That's you know, true. That's so true. many. And he's been locked up for how long now? Maybe a year? You know what? No, because remember, remember, they were thought to be dead. Because Crosshair said they're dead. And ever since then, they were trying to keep it under wraps of the Bad Batch. Once they, once Hemlock oh. discovered the Bad Batch were still out there, he was trying to keep under wraps that the Bad Batch were still out there. He didn't oh, keep under wraps that he was looking for Omega, but he kept the Bad Batch under wraps. Interesting. I Right? Yeah. Or am no, I? No, I think you're No, actually I think you're right about that. I actually think you're right about that. So that that makes sense then. And I, I That's and, right because he was about to lose his funding. Right. Yes. Or no, some I, of it was at risk. That's coming back, yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh that is that's a very good point because that would completely explain. And but I do like the fact I thought it was a really rude touch. I said this in my reaction. I thought I thought it was a really good touch that they cleaned up the armor because we are literally now back to the beginning. You know, everything's kind of coming full circle. They're, they're that, they're the team again. They're the bad batch team again. And they look like they did at the first episode. And I thought that was really, I thought that was a good, good touch, but I didn't realize it. Yeah. I didn't realize they cleaned up that easy. (laughs) I was about to say, wouldn't that take hours? Because you read in, like, for example, uh, the Phasma book, you learn how the Cardinal would spend hours keeping his armor clean. Well, yeah. Yeah, totally. So it's like, it didn't take you that long? Uh, Yeah. Or we time jumped, maybe. 
Maybe. But yeah, but they looked they looked, you know, back to back to their old ways. Black and stealth and all that stuff. So Yes. That was really, really good. I think you know, not a lot as far as anything really revealed. There's just a lot of tension in this. Like you said, the ending was even though you again probably expected them to to latch on and get there because I didn't. But then it's like you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't because it's like feels I feel like they're always just short in this episode, you know? Or in this series. That was crazy. That was such a gutsy move. It was. It was very gutsy. Very risky, yeah, like you said, for Echo, you know, getting on that ship and now he's still technically stuck on there until they figure out when they get to Tantus, you know, how they're going to. I wonder, as Omega is trying to escape, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm real curious how that's going to collide with each other, right? Right, and I wonder, I wonder if this is where we're going to see Omega at least wield the force in some capacity. You think so? Maybe. Well, like, because one thing I think of is when she was breaking through that cell and she found the, the tube or the shaft or whatever yeah. that is. How did she get those bricks in place so fast? Because that wasn't a lot of time. And we know that speed running or running faster than normal is a thing that you can do with the force. Mm. So it stands to reason that maybe you can put things together a lot faster. Yeah. Like the maybe. flash almost. Maybe. Yes. I don't know. Just, just a thought. Yeah. Could be possible. Definitely could be possible. You know, two episodes left. I just think I also have been thinking. I mean, I think these next two episodes are because I think it's a two parter kind of similar to, you know, the way Camino was at the end of uh, season one. Yes. I, 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 I'm just I'm curious on how. I'm, I'm not sure where where how this would end a series, you know, like, because I feel like it, then the series, you've got to have a few scenes of wrapping everything up and, you know, everybody's got to end and somehow find, find their way. And we have to know what are in the tubes that the emperor looked yes. into. Like, I wonder if they'll discover what it is and they're like, we have to blow this place up. Yeah. That, that's kind of where my, my mind was going to was, is, uh, are they going to destroy? Is Santa's going to be destroyed? Is yeah? Is is, is like Hemlock going to probably die? And I don't know. You know, it it's crazy because somehow this necromancer project it does go on, right? Because it's mentioned later. It does. So. so something of the research has to be destroyed. There's, yes. there's gotta be a lot of research that get, that gets destroyed and causes, you know, kind of a reset yeah. in, a, in a way of, of everything. So, and I feel like Hemlock's got to go because he's the only, he's the one that knows the combination, you know, and that works. So if he was still around, I guess that would cause the problem. So I think he's got to, Oh, Without he's a doubt. Perish. Yeah. He's got to go. But it'd be neat, you know, it'd be neat to see these kids find their way out. You know, we haven't seen much crazy, too. It was, it's been a long time since, we, since we've actually seen any of these captive slaves or um, clones. Yes. On Tantus. You know, we've kind of got away from that once Crosshair and Omega escaped. So we don't really have an idea either yet of how many actually are on there. That is also true. You know? <laughs> Which is a little terrifying. Yes. Now the names, because I was going to bring this up. 
the names of these next two episodes oh boy are pretty interesting um let's see bad batch okay so episode season three episode 14 is called flash strike so that means they're obviously attacking (laughs) yeah well i think i think attaching yourself onto a ship without a cloaking device you kind of have no other choice that's right that's right and then the last episode of the entire series is called the cavalry has arrived so this is a two-part battle in my mind yes and i feel like cavalry means they finally get all the clones to fight back maybe rex shows up with a bunch of clones to help ventress comes back with boss <sighs> yeah i would too too bad that's not gonna happen <laughs> And, uh, you know, I think, but I, it, I think this is a chance to get Wolf, you know, when he was contemplating, you know, him showing up and maybe joining forces. I, I just think this is a big, this is that big clone revolution kind of thing is what we're going to see. I think, I think that's inevitable these nights. So I think there's going to be a lot of fighting. There's going to be a lot of. Uh, dare I say, there's going to be a lot of deaths, I think. Yeah, I think that's ine- inevitable. Yes. The only one I think we can be sure of that who survives is Rex. Rex and Wolf. And Wolf, yes. Yeah. And if Gregor shows up, we know he survives. I still, I'm still wondering about Cody. Like, I thought we were going to get Cody in this series. Well, maybe Cody season. is that special ops clone. <sighs> Yeah, that's possible. That it is definitely Cody, possible. It could be Cody, it could be Tech. We have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, just the fact that, you know, Tech probably did perish. Cody is still out there, and I think it's that's a big possibility that that could be Cody. So lots lots there. Lots to uh, look forward to. we got two episodes left right before. And as you know, episode... 15 the final episode comes at us may the 1st which is right before may the 4th which is also tales of the empire which is also tales of the empire that's right and the re-release of episode one the phantom menace for its 25th anniversary is in theaters that weekend as well if you really want to there's a whole star wars marathon you can do the whole skywalker saga all nine films in a row if you really want to do that dang yeah so looking forward to star wars day of course as always and hope everybody has some good plans for that for us in kentucky it's actually derby day as well it is is, derby day uh uh a a statewide holiday here so we'll enjoy that as on the same day so okay let's uh let's talk about some comments here whatever i thought about the our last episodes um so from uh i'll go patreon first so our force reactions from last week's episode uh brandon says i think the reason why they are testing kids and clones especially the kids is to make them angry, desperate, or both, and it awakens the ability to use the force. Then whoever shows the ability is the person's blood to use. Huh. Interesting. Huh. And then he says, now to Crosshair. With Crosshair missing the shot to put the tracker on the ship, I think that this will force him to come clean with himself and get over with whatever is making his hand shake and overcome his mental issues. Yeah. That seems like the case, although we haven't really... You know, it hasn't really dived back into that. Yeah. And then he says, I think the special operative isn't tech. I think it's someone else the Empire screwed over. <laughs> so so you, what you're saying is Maroc is just Maroc. Maroc is just Maroc. We got to accept that, I think. 
Um, and then on our force reaction as well, um, Thrawn Addicts says, really enjoyed this episode. It was good to see Rampart back and did not see that coming. But didn't think it was very convenient that Crosshair knew this all along and never told the Bad Batch. I know he had an excuse why he didn't tell them, but with finding the location of Tantus being so vital to the Bad Batch in this season, I did think this excuse storytelling-wise was a bit weak. I did enjoy this week's extraction mission and loved when Wrecker launched Rampart like a sack of potatoes. That was pretty great. <laughs> yeah. And that's, uh, that is true about Crosshair, I think. I think that was... I understand that could be viewed as kind of... Uh, lazy storytelling you know but i view it as ptsd like he he was abused there he's not going to want to go back home to his abuser so he'll yeah. give everything he can but he's scared to go back so he's not going to give it all away that makes total sense hmm. yeah I, yeah i can see that i can see it i can see both sides i can see but, both yeah. sides uh, let's see. He also says, uh, enjoyed both these episodes of The Bad Batch. Episode 10 was very dark with the children, but was good to see finally what this secret project was about and why Omega is so important. Great to see Cad Bane back, even if he's abducting children. <laughs> and very interesting to see uh, find out bounty hunters have different classes slash ranks, which to my knowledge didn't know existed. Episode 11 had great action and was gutted when Crosshair didn't make that shot with the tracker at the end. Yeah, I think the uh, we talked about that on the Mandalore podcast. Uh, yeah, bounty hunters, as far as I know, before this were not. There wasn't any ranking system. Now I don't know if that's an EU thing or a, a Legends thing, but um, that's the first time we've heard of Class One, Class Two bounty hunters. Isn't it kind of? Wasn't it kind of assumed in Crim Crimson Dawn though? That there were different ranks or different bounty hunters that were held in different lights. Mm, I, or am I just was that, reimagining? Was that, was that comics? Yeah, the comics. Maybe. I mean, that's possible. I, I feel like certain bounty hunters were in certain rooms or in, were in certain areas and others were not. Mm. So, like, I guess maybe I assumed, oh, these are the special ones. Right. These are the experienced ones. These are the senior bounty hunters. <laughs> now, I could be misremembering entirely, but I think you're right. I think this is the first time we explicitly hear the uh, different class rankings of yeah. bounty hunters. Yeah, you're right. I mean, if, if because Crimson, the Crimson Dawn stuff happened, I mean, all that started with War of the Bounty Hunters. Mm -hmm. So that could have been part of that it was a lot of underworld stuff so which i know is, it happens later than this but i mean like the first time we hear we heard of yeah we heard yeah sure yeah 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 obviously they're establishing that this is normal that mm -hmm. they've always had these classes and i don't i don't know what differentiate 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 differentiates differentiates them <laughs> yet <laughs> thank you okay it's a it, Speaking there is, is a, hard. Yeah. There is a book. Um, you know, they, they have these books called The Secrets of, like there's The Secrets of the Sith and The Secrets of the Jedi books. And they're written, they're written by, like the Jedi one's written by Luke Skywalker and the Sith one is written by Palpatine. Okay. There is, a, there is one coming out called Secrets of the Bounty Hunters. So it might be in there that we might learn about these classes. There you go. So I'll be sure to get it and let everybody know. Okay. Uh, on YouTube, let's see. Um, from our last episode, uh, Darth S&M just says, Rise of the Red Blade first, Dave. <laughs> Referring to, like, I should read that next. Okay. Mm -hmm. I yes. will do that. I will do that before I get to the, uh, the living force. See, Thrawn Addict says, I got my copy of The Living Force yesterday and I'm going to start it today. Very excited as we don't get much from this era and hardly anything from these council characters. Looking forward to your review, Hannah. I got to get you that book, I guess, though, right? <laughs> yeah. 
And then uh, he goes on and says, looking forward to Star Wars Outlaws, and the story seems solid enough and hope we we dive deeper into the underworld of Star Wars. I like the idea of it being like Mass Effect, but hope this game is more open world and expansive than that. I think there's a difference in, to a game being RPG and full open world. I think Ma- Mass Effect falls into RPG, where you can explore different locations and choose side missions, but make choices on relationships and story and storyline endings. I like a good main story, but hope you can make certain choices that impacts the ending of the story and also have a lot of side missions and planets to travel to, kind of like the Starfield game. Agreed. Interesting. But see, it, but on that note, though, if you can change the ending of a story, then that kind of doesn't make them canon, right? If a character has a different ending. Yes and no. Um, so with a perfect example with uh, Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2, there's a moment in 2 where um, your mentor, she's asking you, what do you know of Revan? Mm-hmm. And then you get to do, you get to decide what is canon in the game. You get to decide what happened to Renan, Revan, in the previous game. So that mm-hmm. could work. Like you are creating your own canon. Yeah, is that because you are, are you a custom character though? Are you playing as a character? No, Somebody. you're you're in right. In Knights of the Republic 2, you are playing a custom character. Right. So custom characters I get. I I get that too. I yeah, that that's that's also where I'm wrestle, uh, wrestling with this whole thing of like oh, it's open world. And with Mass Effect, it does kind of make sense even though everybody hates the ending of the third game. Um it's <laughs> like <laughs> um yeah. but with one main character yeah especially if they're like there's no customization to them them at all it's okay it's open world i would love for the fact that your choices make a difference in the end but if it's already in a canon universe Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah right 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 Mm. i don't know we'll see we'll see yeah i i mean i have a heart i mean the only uh, the only thing I can think of to separate games in RPG category and open world category, because I, I don't think, at least in my, my, my experience, which is very limited, I don't think that open world necessarily means you have to, uh, you know, there's um, a, a set storyline or there isn't a set storyline that you can change the outcome of it. Mm. Like, right. Like I get it that if you make a custom character in star, and I'm talking about star Wars only all the, other, all these other games. I don't really, you know, you know, if you can have the lead character change the stories, that's fine. But in here, you're, you're K Vess, right. And you're a established character now. And I feel like, as far as canon goes, she can only have one outcome, right? Right. Um, now, how she gets there, that could be interpreted differently, whatever. Sure. You know? But, and, and so the open world aspect to me is more about, can I go to this planet whenever I want? Okay. Or can I do this, when, you know, can I go and just gamble the rest of the day if I, whatever you know what i mean like or if i can go can steal gamble. this can i, I throw I all my steal. money away on some buck exactly or i can go you know shake down this this uh crime syndicate if i want instead of going that's to me open world because like in jedi fallen order which uh, you know star wars that's to me that's more i don't even know if that is that categories rpg or it's not open world because you're restricted on where you can go. Probably RPG. But probably RPG, right? So anyway, that's how I kind of look at them. But 
Okay, Thrawn also says Tales of the Empire trailer was great and was unexpected in terms of characters they are covering in this series. Interested to see more black, more backstory with both characters and love. We get to see Vader, various Inquisitors, including Morak. And, of course, excited to see my guy Thrawn during his rise in the Empire. I, I hope they still do adventurous Dark Disciple Tales series, though. Yes. We do, too. And, of course, Cyber Wren, he comments on here and says, Question. Uh-oh. Speculation about Bad Batch and Hemlock working on either a clone of Palpatine or Snoke's origin. Isn't that what Snoke is? Isn't he part of the first attempt at cloning Palpatine, and he's the only one that has survived the process? Didn't I say that, like, a couple episodes ago, that... This could be Snoke. This could, could be, be Snoke's origin yeah. story. <laughs> Thank it definitely you, could Cyber be. Ren. It definitely could be. I, I I think that, in my opinion, I think that, I think Snoke, I mean, this may be a result of Snoke, but I think Snoke doesn't come until much later. Well, no, I think this would be, if it's going to be Snoke, it's going to be one of his first clones, one of his first uh, iterations. But see, we... Because there were a lot of him in uh, The Last Skywalker. We mean a lot of him. Or The Rise of Skywalker. Remember those tubes that were just full of Snokes? Well, there was only there was only a couple. There was like one big tube that had a couple of bodies in it, but... It was a lot. <laughs> yeah. We, you know, it's weird because... That's that is still a mystery because mm-hmm. here's the thing we know in I, I believe it was the Rise of Skywalker's novel, the Rise of Skywalker, the adapt the 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 novel version of the of the movie. There's a lot more backstory in there about the clones, especially about Ray's parents, and we kind of learn in there that his attempts at cloning himself didn't work. So that's why it was, it was even like, it was hard to imagine watching the movie. It was kind of the weird watching the movie and kind of learning that Snoke was a, I guess a failed clone maybe. But we learned in that book that his, you know, technically his son is, is a clone of him that, was kind of a hybrid. Like it was, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like it was a successful clone, but it was different. That's why he looks, he doesn't look like Palpatine. Right. And so he kind of raised him as his son. And of course that's where he, you know, kind of left and got married and then they tracked him down and killed him, blah, blah, blah. But so there were, you know, it's kind of what we're seeing now too. Like, the, the, like there's, there's obviously ways they know how to clone, but can you clone with the right midi chlorian count to make somebody force sensitive? Right. Right. Now, Snoke, I, I, I'm, I'm still kind of in the mystery of what Snoke is. Like, is he a clone, or is he a body that they like injected his? Because he has the force and he's very strong with the force. I have no idea, man. You know what I mean? Well, and and, and if you remember the the dark um, the the um, Kylo Ren Rise of Kylo Ren comic, like Snoke's been around and he's been trying to, you know, persuade Ben to do other things and explore and ultimately lures him over so and he's nowhere like he's not a dark he's like in a garden like living a life he's not that's what made it so confusing like what who is this guy so i don't think we we really don't have his origin story and i think i don't know if we're jumping the gun to even say besides the fact that seeing him in a in a in a vat of water at the rise of skywalker on exegol I mean, that kind of throws a wrench into what we've seen before then, too. It's like, wait a minute, what? So there's still a story there, I think, that that maybe maybe Lucasfilm doesn't even know what the story is. 
but I, I just I think it's I think it could be anything at this point. And maybe it is maybe he is a failed clone. Maybe he's like I don't think he's I don't think though that any time during between episode three and four, I don't think Snoke is like an existence mm-hmm. or I don't I think it's after later that whatever happens happens and he's kind of realized then. But huh. that's just me. We can maybe see that at some point. Who knows? Yeah. I think that's it, Hannah. You got anything else? I think that's it. Yeah. All right. So thanks, everybody, for listening, watching. We are here uh, inside the force.com. We're also on YouTube and all your podcast feeds if you just want to listen. And. Uh, we got other shows on YouTube. And of course, if you're interested in becoming a patron, go to patreon.com slash inside the force to look at the tiers, sign up and get some additional content there. Hannah, thank you so much. Travel safe. Dave, thank you so much. And you stay safe too. Of course. Well, I'm home, so I'm, I can't get in too much trouble right now. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. We got two more episodes of The Bad Bash. Go check those out. And we will see you next week. Take care. May the force be with you.